Okay. Today's going to be just kind of a, a short video. A friend of ours uh, asked him to reproduce. He's missing one. It's uh, an oil lid for a main bearing cap on a magnet stationary engine. Um, he thinks it's a five or six, it doesn't say. It uh, On this particular one, you can see it's not, uh, doesn't sit flush, so I just use a, a washer just to get it to basically sit flush so it pulls out straight. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll mix some sand up and uh, I'm just gonna use green sand today because I don't need much, just only gonna mix about 10 pounds. And the, the main reason I'm trying this also, I bought a new little electric melting furnace. It's only good for about six and a half pounds. So I just want to, to see how it melts and uh, we'll see how it pours. But uh, I'll just kind of go, I won't maybe go through step by step, but I'll kind of just give a kind of a, an overview on, uh, on uh, how we do this. Okay, for parting dust, we just use this. It says it's a baby powder container, but it's just talk. We go to the, um, uh, the local... Um, uh, what the heck they call it, the local um, pottery store. They sell talc. I think we bought four pounds. It's like a buck a pound or buck fifty a pound, so it'll do us for quite some time. So I just give that a liberal coating of uh, of talc. I'll uh, get the sifter. We'll put some facing sand on it and then ram it up. Okay, we're just about to put the facing sand on. I just have just a little sifter on here. Just need to put just uh, enough to get over the the top there. Like I said, this is uh, truthfully, honestly, for what the casting, what it is, is not that fussy wood bit whatsoever. So that'll be okay for there. You dump the rest of it in. Just kind of use our hands to kind of uh, can feel a little bit moving around, but that way we'll get it back into place. So I'll get another layer on top here, and then we'll tamp her down really good. Okay, it's all tamped down. I stroked the the excess sand off so we'll see if it uh if it's stuck or if it uh that feels okay so the there's our washer we use for our little template here though i don't like it moved a little bit i'm a little close to the edge here but again i should be okay you can see over the years we've had a couple of runouts on these guys now the thing i'll have to do is i'll have to kind of dig out just a little bit here so we got a uh Hard part of my thumb. I'll have to just dig out a little bit here and here, and I'll touch up the parting line so we get a, a good crisp parting line. Okay, I've kind of got everything kind of smooth out the way I want it to. Now, I'm not 100% really worried about getting it too good for here and here because that's where originally you can see where the, the two pouring comes in. I'm going to do there, there. I might even do a third here. We'll see. I'll see when I get it apart. So I said I'll. Uh, Put the top on, fill it full of sand. I honestly forget if it's a copra or the drag. Oh, yeah, I should know better. Uh, like I said, we'll fill it in, we'll release it, and then I'll come in and I'll uh, put my channels into there. So like I said, long as it releases from the top here, I don't really care how these guys are looking because it's all going to get dug out anyways. Okay, that's the, the second side all done. We'll just kind of give a couple of taps around here. Like I said, I don't think it'll be too bad releasing. See what happens here. And it released okay. Should have cleaned my work area up here, but there's the top there. Like I said, it's uh lighting's not the best down here, but you can see my two little indents there on my top and top. So like I said, what we'll do is we'll come in. I'll have a pouring basin uh right about here. I'll split into a Y to go there and there, and I might make one into the middle as well. We'll have to see. Okay, we're just about ready to uh, to close this up now. We're keeping the runner short. I'm um, just because I said it's with brass, we've had issues all the time, especially when we're just using C360 brass. It's not the proper brass, but we've had issues with it chilling before it gets to where it has to get to. So it's going to come in, come down a bit. Hopefully, any impurities get caught in there. Up to the runners, we'll run one, two, three runners. And then you can see on the top there, not much. Have just a little bit of a pouring spout, very short. So we'll close her up. The only thing is I don't like how close to the, the end here. I'm probably going to pack a little bit of sand on the outside just in case if I have a, a spill. I honestly think I will. Make sure you put the right side up. That's why we'll see we'll have a mark and a mark. And uh, we'll close her up and we'll get ready to pour. Okay. 
just for anybody also curiosity we're just using green sand on here sometimes use petrobon sometimes use green sand this is just green sand with bentonite uh, i honestly forget the ratio it's 100 pounds i think there's a gallon of water and i think we're using uh, 70 grit sand on this it's, a, it's actual proper proper foundry sand we buy from one of the local foundries here they're pretty cool with us they'll let us buy small quantities of stuff so like i said we'll uh go uh, fire the furnace up and we'll see what happens there you go now what i was thinking on doing maybe okay we're uh <clears throat> basically up to temperature i just threw just a just a pinch of borax it just as a flexing agent here just uh yeah, we're going with the, the melting temperature or the pouring temperature at 1050 Celsius. You can see our brass is smoking. It's uh, brass we found out is best not to get it right up to temperature and let it go because if not, you're starting to burn the zinc off. And especially it's about 30 below today, so we're not uh, doing this outside. Generally, we do it outside. It's such a small batch, I'm not too worried about it, but uh, always have to be mindful of zinc poisoning. Uh, we're going to just get ready to pour it here in a minute and uh, we'll see how it comes out. The heater. Just for anyone who's thinking on buying one of these, what time is it? It's uh, I put uh, just under three pounds in, and it took, keep in mind they were bigger pieces, but it took about uh, an hour and 10 minutes to melt. If they were smaller pieces, it probably would have melted faster, but these are larger pieces, so it took a little bit longer to melt. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give this a pour. Always remember safety equipment. Even though it's a small quantity, you're doing always remember safety equipment. Safety boots, always remember face shield, safety gloves. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pour her. She's all set up over there. And then we'll uh, show you the final results. Okay, it's been about a uh, dang year an hour since I poured it. But I just put it outside just so it would cool down quicker. Because like I said, it's about uh, uh, just about 30 below uh, Fahrenheit here. It's cold. So I took the two bolts out. Let's see what happens. Oh, smoke's a good sign. It looks like it came out okay. We'll flip her around and see. But definitely... Uh, you can see the number five. I'll bring the original over here. There's the original there. And there's the, the new one there. I'll let it cool down a little bit more and bring it out and cut the uh, cut the uh, the sprues off it. All it looks it'll probably need is just to, uh, to cut them off. Flashing, it did have a little bit where I was worried about where it was going to come out there. It looks like it did, but luckily it, uh, you can see it actually never made its way through. It kind of just burnt into, oh, kind of just burnt into the wood and that's it. It never actually flowed out. So, uh, so yeah, so I'll, uh, get it out of the sand and, uh, we'll take a better look. Well, I'd say all in all, it came out as a fairly good success. It, uh, the number replicated pretty good. Got the, even the little divot to the left of the number there. I had a smidge and a tear right by my thumb there. I'm not even going to worry about it. On the back side, she came out pretty good. There's a little bit more flashing if I feel like taking it out. If not, I'll let uh, Earl can take care of that. So yeah, it's, uh, for what it is, to tell you the truth, we should almost do two of them so you have two matching, but that'll be up to him what he wants to do. But that way, at least he has, uh, he's got a replicate. He was humble about painting it or powder. I think he was powder coating or painting it or whatever he was doing regardless. So he said he didn't care what material was aluminum, brass, bronze, cast iron. So, but yeah, that's uh, using the, uh, the tow auto uh, electric smelter. And uh, like I said, it, uh, it worked out pretty good. A little slower than what I thought, but you know, it's the, the pieces were, were a little bit bigger, but uh, that was just brass uh, C360. So, I mean, nothing, nothing fancy. So, but yeah, we uh, heated it up to 1050 Celsius, which I'm going from memory, I think is right around 1950 Fahrenheit. So it, uh, yeah, it, it flowed nice, it poured nice. So, well, there you have, it. there's just a short little, uh, short little video on uh, making off an original part with an, uh, with an, uh, with say an, an uneven parting line. But yeah, that's it for now.